All right. We welcome everyone to this June 6, 2022 meeting of the Corsicana ISD Board of Trustees. This is a regular board meeting and all items that will be discussed have been duly posted. While this is a meeting in public, it is not a meeting of the public. The board's role is to set goals, approve personnel and budgets, make policy, and provide oversight. We are not here to manage or to solve individual problems. Management is the responsibility of the superintendent. As a board, we believe that we must educate every child, provide every child the greatest opportunity to learn, maintain a safe and secure environment, mentally, physically, emotionally, and academically. These are our core values. We appreciate your interest in the students of CISD. So now we will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. And would Miss Kelly lead us in an invocation, please? Yes. Most gracious Father God, we thank you, God, for this meeting, God. We ask that you would just come into the midst of this meeting, help us to make the right decisions regarding our district, regarding our young people, God. And continue, Lord, just to keep us safe now and in this summer, Lord. Bring us back, uh, bring us back this school year, and no hurt, harm, or danger. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Be seated. All right, Merrill, is there an audience for guests? Yes, sir. All right, so we're going to go into a quick closed session. Uh, we will adjourn uh, in, in permission with Texas Government Code Section 551.01. for uh, discussion and action items about safety and bond security. Do we have any discussion? So I'd like to start with just some conversations that I've had with campus administrators um, regarding um, how we can improve and increase the levels of security on our campuses. As you know, we already have officers um, on each campus. We already have secure entry vestibules. Um, we have our officers who are present throughout the day and we make sure that they're there for our students and, and as well as our staff. So I feel like that they're really an excellent first line of defense as well as our um, secure entry vestibules. However, we've also discussed some additional things that we can do. Um, Chief Stevens has done some research and we have gotten pricing and availability on gun and knife detectors that we could put onto, particularly focusing on our secondary campuses. They are, um, they are cost, of course, they're expensive, but um, we are looking at requesting that TEA allow us to refocus some of our ESSER funds and make this purchase. We talked about hoodies and some of the concerns that we have about students wearing those on campuses. And in addition to this, we've also seen other districts doing things like secure entry, uh, I'm sorry, like um, clear backpacks that they um, have our, their students bring. So it's really up to the board and um, that's, that's the conversations that I've had with them, our different staff members. Can you tell me a little bit more about the gun and knife detectors? Do they work like metal detectors or, um, you know, what do those look like? The concerns with metal detectors are that they go off no matter what type of metal goes through them. Um, on the gun and knife detectors, there is a no nuisance component, and the ones that um, Chief Stevens got the bid from have a um, very high level of accuracy with no nuisance, and that would allow us, if you have a metal detector, 
you have to constantly pull students over and search their backpacks and that sort of thing. But belts, all that. Belts, yeah. everything, anything like that sets it off. But with the gun and knife detectors, it is guns and knives. And so while we would still have to have staff there as students are coming into the building, it would not be the hindrance that metal detectors would cause and just the very slow progression of students onto the campuses. So you walk, I guess you walk through them just like you would a metal detector, but it essentially only goes off with gun and knife. That's correct. Things like that. So um, would those be at several in entrances or would we have to do a single point entrance, which we know has been a real concern of ours because of the time that yeah. it would take? Well, Mr. Doring and Chief Stevens and I walked the high school campus um, last week. And one of the things that we were concerned about is that when you have those, you have to have the electrical outlet adjacent to where you want to have where, where you want to have the gun and knife detector and our school is already built so that that wouldn't be a problem so yes we could have many access points okay. throughout this this school for the mornings and it really wouldn't hinder the students coming onto campus at all we should be able to get them through in just a reasonable time like we do right now and mobility for say like football games basketball games theater band yeah, they're they highly they're highly mobile okay. so we could move them wherever we needed them to go Um, How many do we believe we need to purchase for our secondary campuses? If we had a sufficient amount of money, I'd like to get about 10 to 15 for the high school and then probably five more for the middle school. And that's what we would start with and see. Right. Mm -hmm. We'll start with 20. Mm -hmm. Could we look at one eventually for every campus, or are we keeping it just on the upper levels? Well, that's really a decision that we'd have to make after we use them for a while, and we determined whether or not that was necessary. And if we had the money. And, of or, course, if we had the money. Or we'd have to make some pretty um, difficult decisions mm -hmm. if we purchased those, correct? I mean, we, from the way I see a budget, we at this point where we are, we would have to make a cut in education or salaries, I mean, in order to purchase them for every entrance right. in the they're, district. They're $15,000 okay. each. So it, it would be a significant decision to make. Too. It is, it's a big decision. Um, you know, Seth, given, um, I know what's listed on here is A, I'm just thinking that um, given the light of what has happened um, just in the last two weeks uh, in Texas alone that I, I think I'd like to see um, this A split into two. Wondering if we could possibly do a, um, a, a say, uh, there are already safety and security committees within the district, but maybe we could put some board members on that committee and, and have a, a board and staff committee. Um, I think that is just um, doing even more than what we ought already do but it may be a summer focus on um, safety and security and then could we put the bond and facilities into another committee separate them out yeah we can. because um, yeah. I, I think that um, there was a lot of safety and security inside of that bond but I think that people didn't realize um, the value and um, the extent of that safety and security within that bond so could we separate those two and maybe start the bond once school starts and in this focus right now just on the additional safety and security that we'll be providing our students yeah we can do that when we'll we'll uh, get staff members we'll get a couple to three board members on both of those committees okay. and uh, when we make that bond committee as well we will also try to include many people from the community uh, both inside and outside of CISD so um, and we'll get safety and um, we'll get with Chief Stevens okay. to see and Dr. Frost to see what we, who we need to put on that committee as well. Okay. Um, can I ask a couple more questions about what you talked about, uh, Dr. Frost? You talked about hoodies. Um, can you tell us a little bit of why um, you see a needed change in that? Well, first of all, it's just um, the, vi the visibility of uh, the students themselves I mean, when the hoodies up um, administrators are consistently and continually having to tell students to take off their hoodies um, which of course becomes a discipline issue and it takes their time and um, 
then also you're able to put vaping devices within the hoodies and to utilize those um, and the hood itself the material serves as a screen and, and I've seen where um, you know on social media where um, a significant amount of our teachers have requested this especially with the announcement of Red Oak this last week that they were no longer going to allow hoodies um, I did see a lot of our teachers comment on that so um, I mean there's no there's just no reason to have on a hoodie at school especially in the hot heat of the summer I mean heat of the spring you know when it's really hot outside yeah. if we're going to make changes though we need to do that really quickly yeah. 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 So, um, so I think what we need to do is ask Dr. Frost to bring her recommendations to changes of our dress code policy to our next board meeting, if you don't mind. Sure. Which would include the backpacks, too. We want to discuss that now, or we we'll discuss that at the next meeting? Well, we probably, you Let's, answered, I would think we'd need to make a decision next I meeting. I think we make a decision next meeting, but I think we discuss it here amongst ourselves now. I mean, we're talking about hoodies, talking about dress code, mm -hmm. uh, dress code being the shirts you wear. You know, not saying you can't wear a sweater or a jacket, just not a hood. And then what that shirt is underneath that sweater or jacket, and also the belt. You know, and then in the discussion is, do we go to clear backpacks? I have a lot of opinions on clear backpacks. Um, I definitely see the purpose in them. Um, I would love to do a little more research on them um, before next before our next meeting and um, actually look into it. And actually with that, I'd like to do some more research on the gun and knife detectors and maybe even see if there's videos that show kids walking through them with backpacks and how they work. Um, just because I'm thinking in my head, um, a kid walking in with a tennis bag or a baseball bag and their clear backpack how is that solving anything if they have one bag that's all nylon with all sports stuff in it and then a clear backpack on the other shoulder? I'm not quite seeing a purpose with that. Um, and not saying it does not work. It would hinder kids. I get that. So I would just like to see how the detectors work um, and if it would be purposeful to actually have clear backpacks um, in addition to the, detec the detectors. And that was the question that I had when Seth had had, had called us about those detectors. Who, who else had them? Who else? What, what, what other agencies had, or school districts had those detectors? And I'm sure Scott, I'm sure you did your research on that. But if, if you can just let us know, like you said, see some video or something, how they work. Yeah, it would be interesting to see the school districts that are currently using them if they have clear backpacks, um, or if they had discussion about them as well to see if they went one way or the other. Um, I looked at a couple different uh, Texas state schools that had clear backpacks and they have a lot of um, restrictions on using them and when I was looking at them like one of the restrictions or lack of restriction I guess was you could use a laptop protector and so if you've seen I mean a laptop protector is about this size so you're sticking that in the backpack and that already eliminates the visibility in a backpack so that's my big concern with using them is what are we sticking in the backpacks and are you going to be able to see a weapon inside the backpack with all the books and folders and jackets thrown in the backpack? Is it really beneficial? And um, that's where I, I kind of have a hard problem with the clear backpacks. But I'd love further discussion on that. And um, I don't mind going back and researching some more on that with different school districts to that have it. Um, yes. As part of that discussion, you might want to consider the clear backpacks for um, extracurricular events, football games, Love basketball, that. baseball, yeah. um, volleyball, and so on. Just like they do at all the major sporting. Yes, I love that when we have the public events to definitely have clear bags for that. Yes. Yeah. On the hoodies, I guess this would kind of be calling out Scott, um, but, well, and Brittany, you were at the middle school too. Um, do you do you think if they wore just a sweatshirt with a um, spirit shirt, or or how how um, strongly do you feel about the collars? Um, you know the hoodies the hoodies are a problem. Okay, they are. It's it's a it's a constant battle. It's a battle for a lot of different reasons. I, I understand why the kids want to wear them. I do. Um, 
hair, it's about if their hair dried, it's about if they got ready that morning, it's, it's about a lot of things that the high school would do. Um, as far as what's under a sweatshirt, I am not, I, I don't think that a collared shirt is necessary. Personally, uh, under a sweatshirt. If they have a solid color sweatshirt, any dress code with no hoodie, then a t-shirt under that is, is just fine. But what, what, what I think we'll find is when we take the hoodies out of the equation, the sweatshirts are going to go away. Yeah. The kids wear the sweatshirts in May and August for one reason, the hoodie. Not because the, the rest of it, you know, it's, it's never a cold, like I'm a cold as you used to wear. It's cold all the time. It's more about the hoodie, you know, to pull that up. So, uh, <coughs> no, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not dead set on a collar under a, a shirt, a, a sweatshirt with I know for my son who's at the high school he wears a hoodie every day so he doesn't have to wear a belt that's yeah, that's reasons. yeah that's or his reason or they do it for, you know, a lot of different reasons. yeah and so um, I'm not against that I think Well, and it might help you with discipline too. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, definitely. I, I, I really feel strongly, obviously. I mean, I chaired that dress committee however many years ago it was. I feel strongly about the dress code. And I know that I think that that does cause a lot of your discipline issues. So if we can eliminate, make it easier to not have to wear the collar, but yet eliminate you having to, you know, do that, that might could work both ways for us. Because I, I think that all of us, um, and I know you too, are, um, you know, discipline is going to have to be an issue, especially after what happened in Uvalde. It's just, yeah. there's just no getting around it. You know, we're going to have to behave and we're going to have to follow the dress code. There's just two things we can't stand for anymore. So what we can do to help y'all, I think, is important too. And I think we need to look at cell phones in the classroom. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, how how we how we do that? I mean, you we're know, gonna. I, you know, I had I had I was on that bandwagon too, but after you bowed, I was like, they had cell phones, you know. And I said, well, maybe we can figure out a way to block something, you know, block maybe the social media part, because there is there is a way to block certain certain where they can't get out to TikTok, you know. But I I changed my heart changed after you bowed. I was like, you know what? I, you know, I think the cell phones is fine, but maybe we just need to figure out a way to put a block on certain things. Because I don't need my kids, I don't need the kids on TikTok while, some, while they're doing an active shooter uh, drill. You know, because they, they did that. I saw them on TikTok. They go, Aren't they under? Okay. So maybe we can figure out some, some type of firewall or something to keep them from the other, you know. But I'm, I'm, I changed my thought process behind it because, uh, you know, those kids, I'm, I changed my mind. I'm sorry. Dr. Frost, I know you said that um, you and Mr. Doring and Chief Stevens walked the high school. Um, and I know we had a safety audit by a third party company a few years ago. Um, could our police force do an audit on each campus to see if there's any opportunity for improvement? We have a lot of things in place right now, but um, you know, what can we do? Our, our, change or you know so if they go in and do an audit um and and report back to us maybe what we could improve on or areas of opportunity i think that would be great um and make us feel a lot better um to do that and i i think do we have another um audit coming up this is our year okay for a full blown audit okay. um and we can do the officers doing an audit a, like a preliminary audit right. on campuses prior to that because it'll take place during the school year because they test 
to see that the rules are being followed, you know, that the doors aren't ajar, that, you know, people do what they're supposed to be doing as far as following the district's rules. So that's a part of it, and they come when you don't, you're, the staff doesn't know that they're going to be there. Right. We know okay. they're there, but the staff isn't told. Right. Okay. Because we had we had one just a few years ago, right? It's every three years. Okay. So we've done ours yes. correctly. And like we're just, to. We can just do a little extra this. Yeah. Time. It doesn't hurt to be right. a little too safe. Absolutely. Can I? Can I also uh, for Miss Veronica? Also, is there any way? I mean, because I know you know this upcoming school year. You know, parents are going to be nervous. You know, I mean, I, I already can see it. You know, they're going to be nervous. Mm -hmm. And I know we're working on our part is to make sure that we're going to make sure that they're going to be safe. But I guess for me is that just to put out something, you know, even like to see something, say something, that kind of, you know, verbiage for our, you know, our staff and all that, just just some reassurance that, hey, we, we got you. You know, we're, we're, we're going to make sure your kids, your babies are going to be okay. Because we're working on it. But I just know they, you know, come August, they're going to be nervous. They are. Just because of everything. And I want to say one more thing, too. Um, I am super proud of our district, too, for the security vestibules that were put in place several years ago at each and every one of our campuses. Um, going into the middle school and the high school and requiring your ID when you're walking in and really checking on who, who is walking in our campuses. Our school, we do a great job. And um, I'm proud of the principals and staff and um, everyone for doing that. So I do want to give kudos to our, um, our school district for doing that. And also, okay. Dr. Frost, um, thank you for getting that out there in the paper for our community to show um, the extensive measures that we've already put into place, um, the commitment that this district has made. I don't think that people realize what percentage of security is spent in our budget. It is huge. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, while you're going to take um, criticism no matter what, I was proud of our district for apparently being the only one that answered those questions and it was made public that um, the things that we're doing to keep children safe. So I appreciate it. And our officers, absolutely. One of the things I do want the public to know is that through a grant, okay, not, not school district funds, but through a grant, um, and you know, Officer Denson um, does a great job in running dance grants. We have two new police cars that they'll be seeing. So that's something that the grant was written for the police cars. It couldn't have been written for anything else. You can't use the money from the grant to do, redo a bathroom. It's for a police car. And so when you see two new police cars on the street, just know that that was done through grant writing. And um, Officer Denson. Um, did a great job with that and continues to work on grants for us. She's great. Okay. Well, thank you for that discussion. And it uh, sounds like Dr. Frost and I have a little bit of work to do, so more to come on that situation. All right. Uh, 6B, the District of Innovation. on our new District of Innovation plan. This is a revised version of the current plan that we have had in place since 2017. The current plan, the new plan will be in, in effect from 20, 2022 to 2027. In your board book, you will see the full plan. The um, updates that have been made to the plan, I will draw attention to those, otherwise the plan stays pretty much intact. Um, the first page you will see the District of Innovation Advisory Committee that was put together for the plan development, reviewing of the current items, and then um, looking at feedback and suggestions of things that we might need to do for the new plan. On the next page, you will see just kind of the plan development timeline. Those are things that are outlined by TEA and the um, steps that we must take in order to have our plan um, revised and then also approved. Following that, you will see the innovation plan items. We will not make any changes, um, that we're not requesting any changes to the uniform first day of instruction. We're gonna remain uh, with the flexible school day and minutes of instructional time. The 90% attendance rule also remains unchanged and the teacher certification area remains unchanged. The only area that we will be making changes to will be the very last section, which is the teacher appraisal system. We will continue to use the T-test measure 
uh, that we have been using for several years. The flexibility that we are proposing for this area is to align with our teacher incentive allotments. Uh, we are very excited that Corsicana ISD um, has been approved for the teacher incentive allotment. And with that approval, we will have to follow an appraisal schedule that is aligned with the teacher incentive allotment guidelines. Um, teachers who are designated for TIA or who would like to have a designation for that will have to have an approval each year that they are doing that. And so that is the only change to the, the plan uh, compared to what was in effect for the prior years in 2017 to 2022. Um, are there any questions that I can answer in regard to the District of Innovation plan? If not, this is an agenda item for an approval. Okay, motion. I move we approve the district or move the district approve the Course County ISD District of Innovation Plan as presented. Okay. All right, got a motion and a second that we approve the District of Innovation Plan for Course County ISD. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. Aye. Thank you. Well, the maintenance budget report is going to prim focus primarily on something that we can feel when we walk outside the door, which is the temperature. Um, in May, just in the month of May, we spent about $10,000 on different um, components of the um, air conditioning units at the high school. But over the last year, we spent um, almost $60,000. Um, that is nothing compared to what we need to do at the high school right now. Um, air conditioning repairs at the high school for just this summer amount to about $500,000. Um, there are four units that service the auditorium and the main gym. Um, the main gym has eight to nine units and one of those is a split system. So if you were warm um, during awards day, it's because of the um, way that the air conditioners were not working in the gym and we're also looking at those four now in the auditorium so i met with um, richie and ben baker today and they talked about what was going to have to be done this summer so what we're doing is we're trying to fix those units um, that requires um, you know how catalytic converters are very popular now um, so it's something like a catalytic converter that's out on several of them and there's also the heat transfer units that are also out on several so that's a big cost that the district is going to incur this summer i don't know that we're going to be able to pull five hundred thousand out of the budget so we are probably going to have to do whatever we can afford um, out of the maintenance budget and we're looking at probably a balance right now of about 300,000 but that's total in our maintenance budget that's what's remaining and so there's no way that we're going to be able to repair $500,000 of air conditioning units with $300,000 worth of money um, in addition we need to look at the roofing um, in the C hall at the high school um, we keep repairing that, but there are joints and systems that are going to have to be taken out and completely replaced in order for the leaks to not um, continue to moving to continue to um, move within that roofing area. So those are some of the things that we're looking at as far as the maintenance um, at the high school for just this summer. So thank you, Dr. Frost. I know we asked you to pull this for us once a month, so. Just want to make it out there that that's why we asked what we asked for in the bond. This is this is real. I mean, it's five hundred thousand dollars for air conditioners. That's just this month. Just this month. Well, for the summer. Okay, two well, months for two the months. summer. Yes, but and that's we we closed the high school. We, we ended the school year with those as a problem. We knew they were a problem, and so the units are so huge that it's not just. When you, when you replace it, you can go up on, on the roof, you can make the repairs and that sort of thing, as long as they'll continue to hold out. But they're old units, they're not gonna hold out forever. And when you actually have to replace the unit itself, it requires a crane and a lift and all that sort of thing. So um, we're continuing to um, make them as functional as we possibly can with the funds that we have and with the conditions and the life cycle of the units. Well, thank you very much for bringing that to our attention. All right, we have the 2021-22 communication department report. Good 
Good evening, Dr. Cross and distinguished members of the board. Today I'll be sharing insightful data and talk about some of the tools the communications department uses to disseminate information to its stakeholders. This is your team. We're a fairly new team. Um, I joined in November of 2021, and my colleague, Raymond, he joined in April. When I first joined, COVID-19 was very prevalent in the community. Our stakeholders obviously wanted information in real time. If you look at the dashboard um, on the top left-hand corner, that's the dashboard that we were using when I first joined. What I did, um, uh, I noticed that it wasn't the best use of our time, so I created a new dashboard that provided parents with daily active cases, that information is something that they were seeking, and um, we were able to give this information to them daily. The current platforms that we use are Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, mail, that's snail mail and email, website, and our newest platform, which is TikTok. Our social activity, when I first started, um, one of the things that I really wanted to do was focus on um, being strategic with our approach. And if you look at the graphic that I um, included here, our approach is really working. Uh, one of the things that I want you to see is that at the very bottom, number 10, is our, our um, one of the school districts that is our neighboring school district, which is Ennis. And they have about 8,700 likes and um, I want you to look at the far right-hand corner, which is their engagement activity, which is about 13,000. And look at ours, which is number nine. We have nearly the same likes, 8,900. Uh, we had almost the same amount of posts, which is 22, they had 20, but we have 23,000 likes or engagements that week. If you look at larger school districts like Mesquite ISD, Rockwall, Waxahachie, Forney, DeSoto, I mean, we are doing pretty, pretty well um, compared to some of those. Mesquite ISD is far more larger than us and they have 32,600 likes and their engagement was only 14,000. So that's a big difference there. So I'm pretty proud of the team, and we're continuing the conversation with our reach of Facebook, Instagram. Um, our numbers are trending in upwards. Um, on Facebook, we have about 15.4 increase. On Instagram, we have 11.9% increase. Um, on Facebook, our actual page of visits is about 148% increase, and on Instagram, it's a 53% increase. Now, when we're talking about page likes and follows, we did see a downward trend on Instagram, and I, can, uh, I believe I attribute this to um, us not posting um, videos recently. We're posting a lot more information just because we're not in, the, in, you know, in school right now. And um, on Facebook, we had a 61.9% increase. Our audience, I use this information a lot. Um, I wanna see who I'm catering my graphics to, my material to, and um, on, in, on Facebook and Instagram, our audience are millennials. Um, they're the ar largest audience followed by Generation X. 76% um, on Facebook and 74% on Instagram. If we're looking at our Twitter page, if you know, if you follow us on Twitter, you'll probably see that we're a little bit more active on our other pages, on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, and also emails. And there's a reason behind it. We've noticed, data tells us, that our audience is primarily on Facebook, Instagram, they're opening up their emails. So if we're trying to reach our local stakeholders, Twitter is really not our platform. Our platform for Twitter is, um, we have a small group of educators that are on our Twitter and also professionals outside of um, the school district. TikTok, TikTok is our latest, our newest platform. I created it about um, mid to late April 
and we already have 184 <coughs> followers, um, over 1,500 likes. Uh, the majority of our audience are female, 69% and 31% male. One of the reasons uh, why TikTok was so important, I remember um, in our DEIC committee meeting, I remember Ms. Kelly mentioning she wanted us to have something in paper to give people our, our, our older audience, um, and she wanted something for our younger audience, like TikTok, because she knows that, she mentioned that she knew that that's where our students are at. And so we created a TikTok, and um, it's doing phenomenal. Right now, we have one video that reached about 3,638 views. Um, we have another one, 3,303 views. I mean, our um, Generation Z audience is, I mean, they're very generous with their likes and their shares. That's something that we've noticed, which is great because they are sharing our own information and they're getting the word out about our district. Uh, our website is another tool, another platform that we currently use. Um, what I noticed before is that we were really maximizing the use of our website. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to first find out who our audience is on our website. Um, on our uh, website, our audience right now is 59.6% um, male and 40.4% female. New visitors, um, oh, that number is really small there. 67.1% <laughs> uh, returning, no, new visitors and 32% returning visitors. And let's see, our audience, uh, the age is basically your younger audience and Generation Z and millennials are the folks that are going to our website. Something uh, really interesting that I um, started to see when I was pulling up data for our website is that th three of the top 10 pages are related to HR. So that's either staff resources, human resources, and the pay scales. When they're going to staff resources, I started to kind of um, follow you know, where they're navigating to when they're going to that specific page. And it always takes me back to um, the pay scales or the positions that are currently open. Um, the other page that has the largest piece is the 37.3%. That's folks that are, when I send out an email, usually it attaches to a link and they're going to the headline section, so that's the larger gray area that you see on there. Our emails, um, uh, this is what a typical email looks like. Um, it'll change uh, from day to day, and um, if I send out uh, an email that's about 11,094 emails, that's not specific, that's not 11,000 people, that's about 6,987 individuals, but they have several emails attached to their documents. Um, so we'll get about a bounce back of 6.2%, uh, 687 that are bounced back. What is new? So uh, we've really focused on being strategic with our strategy. Uh, we've tried to focus on telling the tiger story. Um, I'm not sure if, uh, how many, if you guys open my emails. I hope that y'all do. <laughs> um, but I've really tried to deliver, um, deliver great product with um, a lot of Visu vis like nice visuals to go with it because what I have learned throughout the years is that folks want clear, concise information with graphics. They like the graphics, they like clicking on it, oh, what is this? So I try to cater all of my emails, all of my information with a nice graphic. Um, let's see, videos, I try to, we try to push out a lot more videos. Um, and everything, like I mentioned earlier, 
uh, we try to push to our website. One of the reasons why this is so important is because about a year and a half ago, uh, social media went down. I'm not sure if you guys remember, uh, but you know, the whole country pretty much <laughs> didn't know what to do. But luckily, you know, we have a website where we can we can um, send people to so they can get that information. And uh, we don't only want to rely on your Facebook, your Instagram, but we have a hub on our website where people can get that information. And it's all factual information, updated information. Um, Ms. Kelly, um, as I mentioned earlier, you asked for something, an actual printed document that we could hand out uh, to our audience and um, we were able to deliver Roar Magazine in print, in digital, um, also in audiobook, yours truly translated it and um, it's available also uh, for uh, folks that have visual impairments. So what's next for the communications department? I really want to work on improving our website, making sure that I comb through the pages and um, make sure that everything is updated. So we're going to really focus on that this summer and our app. Our app is really outdated. A lot of folks don't even know we have an app. Uh, we got it in 2017 and we've only, we only have about 1,164 individuals that downloaded our app and if they downloaded it in 2017, they're probably not students anymore. So, <laughs> so one, that's one thing that I want to focus on this summer is improving those numbers. Do you guys have any questions? Does anyone have any questions? No. I just have a comment. Now, Veronica, you may not have heard, but my <laughs> dream job is to be reading books, like audio. Like, that's my dream career. So next time you need something read, I'll do it for free. I can add it to my portfolio, but I keep reading Spanish, but I can't in English. Okay, I got you. Well, thank you very much, Veronica. I mean, you've done a lot of great things since you've yeah. come here today. Yeah. I, I appreciate um, that you, you put everything out in English and Spanish. Yeah. That is fantastic. Um, I love it. I love the, the videos that have been coming out. I mean, so it, you've done a great job, and we appreciate that. You can see the difference. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Definitely can. Time. Thank you very much. Okay. Additional agenda items for June 20. Uh, safety and security, safety and, and security. I guess the bond discussion, if we yep. want to create a committee for that as well. Okay. So Dr. Frost? <laughs> Got it? Uh, probably also. Well, I guess it could be under safety and security. We'll need a um, dress code update. Yeah. yeah. We'll We've that. already got that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we got those three things. Anything? Can anybody think of anything else? You've got to what the... 14th, I guess. Till the Friday before. The Friday before. So. Actually, Thursday. Thursday before. 16th. So 16th. Okay. So you've got to the 16th, so please let Dr. Frost know. All right. Well, that's all we have for this evening. We're going to go into closed session. Um, permitted by Texas Governance Code, Section 551.01. This meeting is adjourned.